Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Michael Saint. Um, I work for Microsoft, and I'm the main of the Lanark LSM. And this talk is about um, an ongoing work um, to improve Lanark and to be able to log stuff, to log denials, to ease sandboxing. So uh, Lanark was merged two years ago. Um, so it's kind of new, but it's still uh, enabled uh, on most Linux you know, distros. And um, yeah, um, there's still ongoing work. Um, with new kernel versions, we get new features. We can restrict more and more. And with uh, well, an ongoing one, uh, we'll get support for audit, the audit framework. So um, just um, a bit of context. Um, so what I call sandboxing is uh, mostly a security approach to isolate software component from the rest of the system. So uh, it should be innocuous, um, and well, even if there's innocuous and trusted processes, uh, well, they can become malicious during their lifetime. Um, so two main sandbox properties that we are looking for are, uh, well, to follow the least privilege principle. Uh, we don't want to give more privileges to processes, to users, to just enable them to sandbox and to drop privileges. And well, this should not harm the system, nor other, other processes, uh, even uh, from the same user. What is Lanark? Um, so as I said, it's a Linux security module that can force uh, mandatory access control, but that is available to every user on the system. So it's quite similar to SecComp, but instead of filtering syscalls, you can um, well, enforce an access control on files, and uh, later uh, you'll be able to do the same for network and other stuff. Um, what is really interesting about that is that you can, as an application developer, you can embed it a security policy, so yeah, sandbox definition, into your application. So you don't, you don't need uh, to ask a sysadmin or the user to install to do some um, system-wide security policy uh, configuration and so on. Um, from the user point of view, it is, and it should be transparent. But if the user can have a, well, can run your application on uh, not too old kernel, it will get more protections, even if your application is compromised. Okay. Um, so first, I will start with what are not, uh, what is not the goal of adding support for auditing to, to be able to, to lock stuff uh, for a sandbox. Uh, first, Lanlock is designed to create sandboxes, so uh, it is not um, its goal to track every axis you can think of. And as a matter of fact, uh, that is not possible uh, with the LSM framework because of the way it is designed, designed mostly uh, to uh, deny actions. So uh, LSM may not be able to see every activity on your system. Once it's denied by something, uh, even a um, regular file permission, uh, the LSM will not see the access request. And that's good for performance. But if you want to trust, trace stuff, well, there's a BPF, uh, the F-trace, and so on. What is the goal of adding support for audit to Lanark? Well, there's um, several use cases, several users that might find this interesting. Well, um, app developers want to well, speed up that development and to know what is going on, and well, it will make the, the life easier to see why stuff are blocked, and um, when, and by which process, which is fed, and so on. Um, some users, I guess um, some from you, um, well, would like to understand what is going on and why their application cannot access some stuff. So that might be so interesting and more transparent. 
system inspector or even people that can, uh, well, that are in charge of a fleet uh, may want to take a look at what are um, the um, access denied that are locked and uh, if they are common, if they are common to multiple users or no or not, to be able to extract some pattern and then, well, fix them. And when you're, well, using this kind of sandboxing, this kind of security feature, you may also want to know if it is uh, indeed enforced and for how many processes and if it fits your configuration, if it fits what you expect. And last but not least, for, well, let's say, security experts, uh, well, having logs and especially uh, denials, uh, well, can be useful to detect attack items. And, uh, yeah, it can be some, can bring some clues to follow the, the track of an attacker. Challenge, um, one of the main challenge uh, with Landlock is that it's designed to be used by embedded users. So, um, there is no no way to um, well. There are some limitations uh, from the kernel implementation, and um, well, we need to take that into account. And that is also that can also impact uh, the way you log, you log stuff. Um, so some things to keep in mind that so security policies are unprivileged. Um, you can have, and in fact, you should have in a system multiple and standalone security policies, so one per application, in a shell. Um, they can be nested. You can have a security policy for shell, or for web browser, or for any application that can also launch other applications. So, um, and everything is dynamic, so um, at one time, application can decide to restrict itself, and when the application is gone, well, the security policy for this application is also freed. So what do we like to have in, in our log? And why, in fact, do we want logs? Um, well, we like to be able to identify what is relevant. Uh, when something blocked an access, um, well, most of the time, it, we're interested by knowing which was the latest applied policy that blocked this access. Because again, uh, line -like security policies, sandboxes can be nested. And so most of the time what you want to know is the latest one, so the one which is uh, applied by the application, not the shell, for instance. Uh, so what was the issue with this policy? And what you want to know which uh, accesses might be missing well, are missing if this access is legitimate. You may also want to identify um, on the security policy hierarchy where you are and which part, which node of the um, sandbox hierarchy block the access. And, well, if you're uh, passing all this log and so on, uh, well, you might know when it's not relevant to keep tracking of a specific sandbox anymore if it's gone. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that logs, and especially logs coming from the kernel, are and should not be available to invalid users because they contain, they may contain sensitive information. Um, and yeah, so this is implemented thanks to the Linux audits mechanism. So I just sent a patch release this morning uh, it looks like it's not yet in the law kernel, mainly in this archive, but it should be soon. Okay, let's see a demo. That would be a bit more explicit. So, um, at the top of the screen, um, there's mostly a tail of uh, the kernel logs. And at the bottom, so I'm log, uh, well, in this case, uh, as root user, but I could be as any user. And um, I would like to launch a shell in a sandbox. So for this, I'm using um, a tool which is called Sandboxer here. It's part of the Linux kernel samples. So in samples unlock the sandboxer.c, you can compile it and use it. So it's, it's really a simple sandboxer. Um, yeah, many uh, 
as an, an example. So, in this case, um, I will create a new sandbox, and there is mainly two configurations here. First one is uh, the set of paths that we would like uh, to be accessible in a read-only way. And the second part of the configuration is a set of paths that I would like to be accessible in a read and write way. So that is quite common. You want to access uh, slash TMP to write some files, uh, but also you also need to have access to slash US error, slash bin to execute binaries and load libraries and so on. So let's launch this. And what you can see that is a few um, audit entries actually. You can see which application uh, well launches this well created this entry. Uh, what was the operation? In this case, it was a rule set creation because the sandbox application created a rule set, and you can see the description of this rule set, which is mainly that uh, this rule set can handle and by default block a set of file system access uh, um, actions, which are here. So you can block execution, writes, um, uh, links, migration, um, and so on. Then with the second entry, uh, we can see that the, the application, this process, this thread, uh, has to restrict itself to sandbox itself. So it is creating a new domain, in this case, domain two. And um, what you can see here, at, well, in the first part, is that we created the rule set which is name one. And, well, with uh, ID one, and then we are creating a domain with ID two. Um, we are creating this domain from the first rule set because we need to first define a rule set, a security policy, and then to enforce it, which then creates a domain, an analog domain, a sandbox. And you can see well, there is no parents for this um, sandbox. Then, well, you can see there is a rule set release because uh, the rule set and um, the underlying file descriptor is closed, so the rule set is um, released. And then you can see a first denial. Um, with the open action, so in this case it might be the open syscall, but also it might be the open art syscall, so it doesn't matter, uh, so it's really the action to open a file. And this open action got um, a return value, which is uh, 13, so in fact it's a uh, E access or the access was denied, and you can see why it was denied. So there is uh, two missing uh, file system accesses: write file and read file. You can also see, see that this uh, missing permission, which is empty, which is that later, and you can see where, uh, well, why and on which kind of object, on which file, uh, this action was denied. So it was denied, so the shell tried to use, uh, to open dev TTY for some shell stuff, and it was denied because it wasn't part of the policy. So um, we can continue, you can try to instance list the content of slash, which is not allowed because it's not part of the policy. You can, you can only read the content of some directories, but not the root directory. And in this case, well, you can see there's a new process LS, which is a sandbox by domain number two, and the open action uh, well was denied. I can see same uh, the error code, and you can see well uh, it was denied because uh, this sandbox is not allowed to read uh, the slash, the root directory. So uh, yeah, other stuff can go on. For instance, you're not allowed to um, amount stuff. So in this case, uh, there is no, strictly speaking, uh, well, policy defined access rights. These are uh, by default. Uh, this is by default uh, denied because it will be able to. Uh, it will allow to bypass the policy, so it is denied by default. And you can see why. Uh, there is a what I call a missing permission, which is specific to Lanark, and it, it is. Uh, file system layout. So you are not allowed to change the file system layout, otherwise, uh, well, the policy you first define will not make sense anymore. And um, well, last example, uh, you should also be able to trace some processes, processes inside the sandbox, but not processes outside the sandbox. So if, for instance, you 
try to trace process, uh, let's say, uh, PD1, um, it should not be allowed. And that is, in fact, not allowed. So we can see the um, uh, P-trace operation from the scanning point of view, um, requested by the S-trace program, was denied by domain two, uh, because um, there's a missing, missing permission, uh, which is, uh, well, what I just say, uh, you're not allowed to trace uh, processes are not in a sandbox or not in a nested sandbox. Okay, that's it. So what's next? Um, there's some missing features. So uh, it's our first AFC batteries, uh, but it's still testing. Um, and one of these missing features, for instance, is what well, is not strictly well, it's not, it's not only for this feature, it's for other stuff too, but it's an unlock, but it is the ability to uh, essentially freeze and restore processes then thanks to the QU uh, framework. And for this, say some, well, there are some changes too. Uh, we need to be able to reproduce the current state of sandbox. So for this, um, well, a use page process, a pre-ledge process should be able to read some, well, more, uh, landlock domain properties uh, to be able to create a root set that will mimic this one and then will then be able to restore a full system with this um, mechanism. But for that we also need to be able to uh, reproduce IDs, uh, domain IDs, root set IDs to match them uh, uh, fit uh, with the logs and yeah, whatever information you, can, you could have uh, from the previous instance of the system. Um, so yeah, what we could do and what is done for the mechanism, kernel mechanisms, is to be able to what well, to expose these IDs and to be able to set them, to update them if they are not set. But we need to be careful there. Um, this needs to be a predetermined operation, and only in this case, in the case of uh, process um, restoration. Um, and yeah, that should not be used to bypass anything or to get information about anything which is not really known by the process performing this operation. Um, you could also compare this kind of feature with what can already be done uh, with SecComp, uh, even if SecComp is really special because SecComp can only filter syscalls and their arguments. So you don't get the kind of semantic, you cannot get five paths, you cannot get uh, process IDs or stuff like that. But SecComp um, is also one syscall and can be configured by the user, most of the time the application developer, to log or not some actions. And that can also be uh, well allowed or denied by the system administrator. So we might also want to have this kind of stuff um, or maybe a better way to filter uh, audit entries. Um, other stuff um, I'd like to have one day is uh, the ability to expose more internals, uh, more information about a sandbox, uh, how a sandbox is built, uh, what it really constrains, and how much, for instance, uh, a specific rule from the rule set was, well, did actually block an access request. And that will be useful to know, well, if there's something special happening, if an application is trying again and again to access something, but it is nice, so maybe, well, we should tweak this application to not uh, request so often. Uh, but again, there's some challenges here, um, mostly about the ideas. Uh, because this interface will be accessible to enterprise users, well, uh, we cannot, for instance, use um, sequential IDs because that will kind of leak some information about all the sandboxes, and yeah, we don't want that. Um, yeah, why not go through all the points here? But I think you get the idea. Uh, it will be to expose a new file system that will mostly be useful for developers. And that could also be able to uh, allow to trace at runtime what is going on, which well, would be kind of complementary to the logs. So 
Um, if you have any thought about that, uh, I'd be happy to, to hear about them. Um, what you would like to see in your logs if you're submitting applications, uh, and what you would like to not see in your logs because you don't want to clutter your logs with useless information. Um, yeah, so I sent patches uh, this morning. Uh, it should be available uh, soon, well, um, in the lower uh, kernel archive mailing list. And uh, yeah, feel free to test it and to send feedback on the mailing list. A quick um, overview of the roadmap, the ongoing and next steps uh, for analog. So there is uh, ongoing work to support outlets. Um, so this is a work uh, done by uh, Gunther Noack. And there's also ongoing work to support uh, TCP restrictions, um, which is uh, the work of uh, Constantin. So all these um, are really in good, um, good way moving forward. And I expect to merge them in maybe one or two releases of the kernel. Uh, well, there's now a new uh, patch series for edit support, and of course, there's uh, well some ideas to improve performance of um, this sandbox mechanism. Um, but yeah, we need to have time, so if you want to contribute, feel free. Um, thank you for your attention. If you have any question, you can ask me now or later. I'll be there all today. And um, if you're still there after the lunch. I'll give another talk, well, a workshop, about how to sandbox an application. And that will be um, explained with um, a vulnerability exploitation of image magic. An old one, but still um, interesting. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so I hope to see you this afternoon. And if you want to come and to do the workshop, please follow the instructions. It is on the schedule. And yeah, you need to install uh, Vagrant and start that. Thank you.